nice to see so many familiar faces. Great day. Uh, I know, I'm a banker, so you're thinking, uh, what is he going to tell us about the future after having been uh, largely responsible for some of the financial mayhem that uh, we found ourselves in most recently, right? Well, I understand many of us are considered guilty by association, and I'm even going to touch on that point today. But I'm here to tell you that I am proud to be a New Hampshire banker, and I'm going to tell you why. First, let's start at the beginning. The U.S. banking industry began in the late 1800s, and as it evolved, it became obvious that there was a need for a central bank. In 1914, the year World War I began, President Woodrow Wilson signed into law an act that formed the Federal Reserve System, known more commonly today as the Fed, comprised of 12 different districts. Over the course of time, our Fed has been put to many stress tests, including most recently on 9-11, and then during the 2008 financial crisis. The primary role of the Fed is to provide uh, monetary policy. It also works with, but independent of, the U.S. Treasury. So why do I mention this and why is it important? I tell you because some of the challenges that the banking industry faces in 2013 that I'll discuss in a minute is a direct result of some of the actions of the Federal Reserve Bank systems and its directives. So let's take a big picture look at banking today. Nationally, the number of banks has consolidated dramatically from over 14,000 to 7,000. Banks are defined often by size, from international to uh, national to super regional to regional and to community banks. For today, most of my comments are going to apply to the community banking industry here in New Hampshire. Similar to the national figures, banking in New Hampshire has also sharply <coughs> consolidated over the last several decades from over 100 to approximately 36 today. Also, please note that there are about 6,000 uh, bank employees here in the state, so there are a lot of us, so please remember to try to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> so how has our industry recently performed? The economic and interest rate environments since the financial <coughs> crisis of 2008 have been very challenging for banks, but the New Hampshire banking industry has fared comparatively well since this crisis. While well, I'm sure that some of you may not agree, New Hampshire banks have done an admirable job meeting the credit needs of local businesses and consumers over this very difficult period. Having said that, the industry does face many challenges going into 2013. Number one, continued low interest rates. The Fed, through the monetary policy, implemented a low interest rate strategy to spur economic activity following the 2008 meltdown. Given the continuation of weak to modest economic indicators, they have publicly stated their intentions to keep short-term rates very low, perhaps near zero, at least through mid-2015. I am sure that everybody who has a savings or money market account has noticed their rates, so I would say don't expect changes here in 2013. This is certainly a period where it's better to be a borrower than a saver. Number two, earnings pressure. Low interest rate and growing core business costs, such as compensation, health care, utility, and the such, combined with nominal asset growth due to a muted economic landscape, have and will continue to put real pressure on bank earnings in 2013. Number three, hyper-competition for assets. If you are a business borrower, there is no better time to have numerous choices as to with whom you want to do your banking. Strong capital and liquidity have banks tripping over each other to new deals and to form new relationships. The combination of this and the absence of much new economic activity have created the situation which will certainly exist throughout 2013. Number four, consolidation. And lastly, the stage is set, yes, for further consolidation beyond what I had previously outlined. Given earnings pressure, a significantly steepened regulatory burden, aging executives, aging boards, and the less, less availability of capital, it is certain that there will be fewer banks nationally and likely fewer here in New Hampshire, if not in 2013, in the near future thereafter. As evidence, two of the three banks that were formed here in New Hampshire following the start of Centrix in 1999 have since been merged. To close, the banking industry has historically been very resilient and has survived multiple systemic shocks. Following the 2008 crisis, 
the banking industry got hammered by the media, and the industry reputation was badly damaged. The resultant reactive legislation, known as the Dodd-Frank Modernization Act of 2010, was passed, and in crushing new costs, requirements, and regulations, the banks across the entire size spectrum, including community banks here in New Hampshire. We did not participate in the bad practices that gave rise to the crisis in the first place, but yet we are certainly now subject to its many impacts. Despite this, the New Hampshire banking industry has stood tall to make credit available to deserving borrowers. Additionally, we have continued to play a significant role in philanthropy and charitable investment and sponsorships throughout New Hampshire. I anticipate this too will continue into 2013. We face many headwinds entering this year, the low interest rate environment, the real pressure on earnings, hyper competition for assets, and the risk of consolidation. But looking more globally, I am hopeful that in 2013, we can see beyond our political differences and create an economic environment with more certainty to spur investment by both consumers and businesses alike. We need to work locally, locally, to help each other. In the meantime, the New Hampshire banking industry will continue to provide the, bank, the business sector with many attractive options to secure the business uh, products and services you need in 